Hello, this is Paige. And this is Monique. And this is Sacred Potential. Where we explore the overlap of creativity, spirituality, and possibility. Today's episode, I hope you guys are excited, is Sacred Potential versus Scared Potential. Where we talk about fear versus faith. Mm-hmm. Girl, this, uh, mm, this is, uh, fear is always an interesting topic for me. Because um, it's, uh, I, if I'm being honest, it's something that I tend to battle with quite often. Um, making that decision on fear versus faith. What is my day going to look like? What what am I going to live by? Um, yeah, it's, 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 definitely, it's definitely a topic that I'm very interested in. What about you, Mo? Like, what... How do you feel about fear versus faith? Hmm. Well, I think that I've come to realize that uh, both are a choice that we make and that um, there's there will be things in our lives and usually possibly are. Um, so anybody's listening, there's possibly are things that are can cause one or the other. And uh, maybe that neither one of them cause anything, but how we interpret it is um, where the cause and effect comes in and then what we do with it. So let's say, let's say that you just got some really scary news or you got some really bad news. And believe me, I've had my share of bad news or seemingly bad news or clearly bad news. Mm -hmm. And it isn't that you, um, you know, receive some terrible news or something and then you just go, oh, it's all, it's all, it's fine. It's, you know, oh, it's really not bad news. Mm -hmm. I really feel like there's like an honesty that's needed where you first have to acknowledge, here's the situation. Here's how bad it looks. Here's what it, what I got. This is the information I got. But I really believe, especially from experience, that you can even take something that, yes, it is a bad thing and you can actually find a way to turn it into potential for a good thing. Right. And for faith. It, it's funny because there is obviously the receiving bad news, receiving a phone call that's like, oh my gosh, mm-hmm. I really didn't need to hear this. You're getting an email or someone knocking on your door. But there's also receiving news that is not necessarily good nor bad, mm-hmm. but then making the decision, sometimes subconsciously, on how you will perceive this news to be. Yeah. So, um, I, I mean, I've had many situations like that where if, I don't know if the audience, if anybody is anything like me in the sense of, I tend to plan my life. I like to plan on how things will go. And then so weird about life, how it happens, how it decides that, you know, yeah, no, this, this is, this is what, is going to happen. And, and for me, oftentimes it, you know, in terms of my relationship with God, that's usually, uh, what he tends to do. It's, there's that expression that says, um, there's that expression that goes, um, man plans his life and God laughs. Oh, the Lord is having a field day with me. Let me tell you. Um, because I, I, it's just, it's normal. It's safe. Um, I like to play it safe. I'm not going to lie. That's just um, oftentimes how I tend to live. But the thing that's interesting about faith, there's no safety in that. It's it's about risk. And there's also, and just going back to the whole idea of perception, when you take that leap of faith and you go um, in that, you go in a direction where it's not what you initially planned or thought you would go there is also some excitement in that as well. Um, it, it all depends on how you choose to view it. Um, but fear causes anxiety. <laughs> there's nothing fun about it. There is, um, there's only stress and there is always more worry and more concern. Whereas faith, yeah, there is, there is that concern or whatever, but at the same time, it's that what if. Again, mm-hmm. it's like, but there is a chance that this can work out. Mm-hmm. There, there, there. Actually, this could possibly work. And um, taking that moment to rest. And trust me, it's not. 
something that is an immediate thing. It's not necessarily that easy, but it's something that is worth practicing because having gone through enough fear, I have chosen and I'm making the decision every day to go with faith instead. And especially with in the times that we're living in, the climate of what's happening in this day and age with the whole the whole situation that's going on that will remain nameless. But you guys actually can fill in the blank with with either that situation that's happening in today's world or whatever is happening in your own personal life. Mm-hmm. You know, it can fill in that blank and just um you know, the hysteria that could potentially surround that thing, you know, how, how does it look for you as far as like, what decisions are you making to skirt away from fear and head towards faith? Mm. Oh, you're asking. <laughs> um, well, I was actually thinking that, um, in terms of fear versus faith, I feel like fear shrinks us and faith expands us like when when i when you picture fearfulness right it's this feeling of like or a vision of like uh getting small and shrinking up and hunching over and protecting oneself whereas faith is like your arms are open and you're like open to uh possibility rather than fear where possibility becomes scary and uh yeah, faith is like where possibility is exhilarating. Mm-hmm. And um, one of my favorite stories uh, that Tony Robbins tells is um, how he uh, had met two different people, two very famous people, both musicians. And um, I can mention names. Some of you may not even know who they are because they're <laughs> way before your time. <laughs> no. um, so he had he had met, or I guess he coached uh, Carly Simon, who was a mm. you know really big singer in the I guess eighties or so, seventies, eighties. And uh, she struggled with, and a lot of a lot of performers struggle with enormous stage fright. Mm-hmm. And she, it would almost incapacitate her, where she almost couldn't go on stage because the stage fright. Even though she had all these adoring fans, she still would struggle with this. And then he asked her to describe, well, what does it feel like? And she said, oh, it's like I get, like, I, like my blood starts, like, I feel like my blood's racing, my heart starts racing, and I'm, I just feel like my hands are clammy, like all this kind of description of like a panic attack or anxiety or whatever. And he was like, okay. And then, you know, he worked with her. And then years later, he meets Bruce Springsteen on an airplane or something. I don't know how these all these famous people just run into each other on airplanes all the time. But <laughs> anyway, but he's talking to Bruce Springsteen. And Bruce Springsteen, you know, is talking about how, like, how he feels before he goes on stage, and he's describing the excitement and how his, his, you know, his heart starts pounding, and he starts getting clammy hands, and he feels all this, and, and so the point being that how you, the meaning you give that, like, what you decide in your mind, what that means will determine how you approach that thing. So for one person, it's fear, and for another person, it's excitement. Mm -hmm. So what if everything that we face that can be scary, instead of feeling scared about it, we feel excited about it? It's so interesting. And and just when you mentioned the whole thing about faith opening us up, especially in the worlds that we're in, in terms of being artists, being creative, it's faith only allows for creativity, Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Whereas, like, um, when it comes to fear, it's your brain, as you say, mm-hmm. you, you, um, you kind of, like, crouch down or whatever. It's, like, in terms of the physical, uh, what happens to you physically, even it feels like your brain is shutting down. Mm-hmm. It's, like, if you receive some horrible news and then someone asks you to think about, oh, could mm-hmm. you tell me where sure. this is? It's, like, the last thing you can't think. It's, like, it's, you, your mind is just completely clouded. Mm-hmm. And, um... And it's, it's funny because when you think about stuff like this, especially when you go into the realm of science and, and, and they look all into these types of things and you look into all of the neurons and all of these things yeah. and it's, they, they basically show you with these like, um, illustrations that this is, this is not meant, you weren't designed in this way. Mm-hmm. This is, um, your body is not meant to handle this. I mean, most of the time, a lot of these diseases come from, you know, stress mm-hmm. and because it's dis-ease, mm-hmm. right? When you were going to say? 
something. Oh, just that that thing about the the brain, how it's basically how, especially in, you know, they always say in modern day, which I, I always wonder because there was a time where, you know, people were, you know, uh, living in the middle of the wilderness, dealing with, you know, wild animals and things. So I feel like there's always been throughout history, different stresses people had, yeah. but how they often like with neuroscience stuff, they talk about how, um, there's the fight or flight thing. And so, which makes sense that if you're being chased by a wild animal, mm -hmm. you're not able in that moment to be thinking about, hmm, gee, let me see, how are we going to prepare dinner today? Or, exactly. or how am I going to pay the bill? That kind of thing. But yeah. the thing is that, um, a lot of times we're in a, a fight or flight state in regular life where we're not being chased, we're not being pursued. And it's like the brain is reacting as if that's what's happening. Mm -hmm. And so again, this is not in any way to discount incredible challenges uh, that people are going through because I could talk about one right now personally, mm -hmm. but, but again, it's about what do I choose to believe? Do I choose to uh, look at the situation and go, yeah, that it's hopeless. It's never going to change. It's the most horrific, terrible thing ever. Um, and it could never change. Or am I going to choose to say, you know what, that situation looks impossible and maybe to everybody else it's impossible, but I choose to believe this one thing. And that is that that situation is going to completely reverse. Yeah. And then to start seeing it happen is the most amazing thing. How it's only after you decide mm -hmm. this is what I choose to believe. That's, you know, it doesn't always happen quickly, mm -hmm. but, um, to stick with, I just think it just stick with belief because you're always going to be better off. <laughs> yeah. Because I, I do, and going uh, going back to one of the previous shows in terms of who you surround yourself with, because sometimes, excuse me, I find that depending upon whatever your situation is regarding a fearful matter, for instance, if you present your situation to someone that you trust and someone that um, can see it in a, um, you know, can really be more creative with their thought process because sometimes when you're in it, it's harder to kind of really think, um, creatively, um, as far as like, you know, seeing a way out potentially when you can present it to someone that you trust and that can look at it differently. It's amazing when they could start giving you suggestions. Well, have you thought of this? And, and when it's in positive going in the positive direction, mm -hmm. It's amazing. It was like, oh, wow, wow. I never even considered or thought of that. And suddenly, and this is with my own personal experiences, I've had situations where um, it, things that just appear to be like a dead end. There's, it's just no way. Mm -hmm. And um, I would, you know, present it to a friend and they would, you know, talk to me, talk through it with me. And and then you really start to think, oh, okay, well, maybe maybe it's not as bad as I thought it was, or at least least not so much that it's not so bad, but it doesn't seem like something that's going to overwhelm me. It's something that I can actually overcome, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. and and that and also, um, especially with fearful situations, sometimes depending upon you who you are or who you can become, you can actually use those things to. Um, to actually, what's the word I'm looking Actualize? Or like... Exactly. Yeah, because it's like, um, I remember there was a, um, uh, a phrase that people would throw around a lot, do it afraid. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it's sometimes when you do do it afraid and then you come out unscathed and like, okay, it almost like really builds you up. You're like, oh my gosh, mm -hmm. I can really, I'm, you know, I'm, Wow. Okay. I I really. What I I want I wanted to say something, but I it, this is a um, this is a children's broadcast. No, <laughs> I don't want to say anything. But you know, it, you know it, it it basically ultimately what I'm I'm trying to say is um, give yourself more credit than you think because you're a lot stronger than you actually think that you are, or at least that's oftentimes what I tell myself, and usually. The results of a fearful situation, um, the aftermath is usually me saying, oh my gosh, I actually, God, thank you. I actually made it through that. It wasn't 
as bad because oftentimes our imaginations can make it worse than it actually is, you know, especially fearful situations where it hasn't even happened yet. Mm -hmm. It's just the news has been presented. And then mm -hmm. that's just your opportunity to, to, to like kind of think more about it. And usually what you're thinking about it is worse than the actual outcome. Yeah. So and it's like something like 98% of the things that we worry about don't actually happen. <laughs> and if you think about how much time and energy is taken up with worry, fear, what, could go what could happen in a negative sense where if you just start practicing redirecting that and that's the thing it really is a practice it's not just something that oh today I wake up and I feel really snappy and clappy so but it's like having to really always be um, choosing that and um, and you started to touch on um, the thing of who who you know the people in our lives who we surround ourselves with and I just want to uh, kind of go back to even just the title of this uh, in terms of like sacred potential versus scared potential and like let's just think about everybody for a minute like think about what is something that you know I mean a lot of you already know okay there's just this thing that I know that I, I want to do or that I want to pursue or that I believe I'm meant to do in this world and you know a lot of times when that first uh, is first really something that you start to ponder as a serious reality it can be really scary because it seems so huge and it seems so big and it seems for you know like so far away but when you think in terms of how do you feel when you picture like the ultimate end of that thing you know whatever that is you know you want to be a, a painter you want to be an actor a fashion designer a pastor a, a public speaker anything that you you just sense this is what you're supposed to do the people you surround yourself with are really critical because especially when you're not feeling confident or you don't really know, if you share that with the wrong people and you tell somebody this precious dream that you have that is like, you just know deep down, it's just like the core of who you are and then you expose that to some negative people who have never pursued their dreams, they're stuck in lives that they don't like they just tend to live in a state of lack and you uh, share that with them uh, pretty highly likely you're not going to get a um, positive uh, input on that so thinking about the people in your life this is why even on our trailer you know who are you with um, already be thinking about who are the people that you want to surround yourself with it uh, doesn't mean everybody has to be, you know, completely the most amazing positive people doing the most amazing. It's just the fact that you want to be around people that are going to speak things to you that are not that they're going to lie to you. They're not going to be like, yes, you're the greatest singer in the world if you really aren't. Um, but just people that at least, at the very least, believe in you and like want you to do the thing that you're here to do mm -hmm. and that are going to encourage you. And let's say you're... You want, let's say you want to sing. Let's say that's something that you want to do and you're like, yeah, but uh, like I'm a terrible singer or something like that. Just throwing it out there. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean you can't become a good singer. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that by having that desire, you can't start pursuing that and working on it. I mean, any, anything. I mean, okay, if somebody's completely tone deaf, maybe. Mm -hmm. There's, mm -hmm. But even then, I feel like if somebody has the determination and the, the desire, they'll find a way to do something. Because mm -hmm. there are people that are doing things in the world where it's kind of like, how did they ever get to that place of, you know? And you know, it's funny because um, I think also in terms of those people, whether they be friends or just, you know, co-workers or whomever um, they are, I think generally those people in terms of scared potential, people who are not necessarily edifying you or speaking life into your existence into your into whatever it is that you're doing it's it's them being scared on the in their side because i know that you know oftentimes if if you're doing something where you're trying to pursue whatever it is that you're trying to pursue um like again being a singer let's just use that as in the example as mo used and you're presenting this to someone who probably doesn't have a lot of faith, you know, or whatever, they aren't necessarily putting you down so much. It's kind of like, I think they're probably looking, because oftentimes, yeah, at least in, in my- from their own place. Exactly, from sure. the place that they're at, at that moment. 
And um, I think be careful with who you share things with. But at the same time, if you happen to say something to the wrong person, you know, not thinking, you, 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 didn't, you weren't really thinking about it and you happened to say something and someone said something that just kind of felt like it killed your dream or whatever. Bear in mind that this person, at least it's, I don't know, maybe I think too, sometimes I think too good of people at times, but I don't think that person meant any harm. No. It's just from where they're at exactly. at that moment. Mm -hmm. And, but, you know, sometimes it's not even necessarily about sharing the stuff verbally. It's also just about living your life and doing and with, because people, as they say, actions sometimes speak louder than words. So if you are actually pursuing, you're going to these auditions, you are taking singing lessons and all that kind of stuff, that stuff speaks volumes. And when someone who's probably not there yet in terms of their faith building and they're just kind of like, you know, stagnant as far as where they're at in their belief and they see you doing these kinds of things, that does something within mm -hmm. them. They might not say anything to you about it, but it does ignite something. Mm -hmm. And that is good because that will probably fuse something within them that will cause them, to, well, they're really, they're really going for it. And especially if you actually make it in that area mm -hmm. and then they could have, they were there to see you go through that journey. Mm -hmm. um, because I think that's essentially what life is, is, is in terms of the connection of people it's you are living, you're bigger than your body, essentially. And in terms of what you're doing, um, because you're meant to do what you, you're doing, but in doing what you're doing, you're meant to, I guess, sort of inspire other people in terms of their own gifts and their own passions. At least that's what I, I truly, truly believe. Mm -hmm. And um, so I, I guess ultimately... Because I just don't want it to appear as though like um, uh, we're putting down people who are like negative. Yeah, no, I mean, it's just they're where they're at. But it's also about you know being wise about exactly again. It's like if if you know that certain people have a tendency to be negative or mm -hmm. not uh, believe that things are really possible, then why expose? Uh, you know, your your dreams, something that's really precious to you to that. I mean, I, yeah, there's so many examples that could be given. Yeah. Um, but that's not to say that there's not understanding for where people are at. It's just to say that that's, that, that's fine, but also to be, to do what you need to do, take care of yourself and protect your own, you know, your heart, your dreams, and um, to know that even though people may not, they may mean well, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean that it's going to uh, have the best impact. Right. And so, yeah, that's... Because it is important to, it's definitely important to protect your dreams and to protect um, your pursuits. And um, that is really important. I think it's especially in terms of um, just going back to scared potential, just anybody who's listening, know that, you matter, whatever it is that you have within you, honestly, trust me, it matters to this world that we live in. Mm -hmm. Like it, 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 you might think, oh my gosh, how, you know, what's really funny. There are people who have a desire and probably wouldn't even say it to anyone, probably have a desire to be like a garbage collector, mm -hmm. like a garbage man, a garbage woman. Mm -hmm. But to say that is like a passion that just seems ridiculous, seemingly so, because it's like, who says that? Mm -hmm. But could you imagine if we didn't have people who, exactly. didn't, who didn't do that? Yeah, and who says it's their passion, but it's something that, for some reason, that that's what they're doing now. Exactly. But that garbage collector could be at home, you know, working on a play. Exactly, So <laughs> exactly. It's like, you know, it, it don't... Um, ultimately, I guess the whole point is, like, I want everybody to know that everyone should be appreciated for who they are Absolutely. and what they're doing because yeah. it's like they in some way or another everybody is helping out everyone else because again just in terms of the garbage collector it's like they're picking up your garbage essentially mm -hmm. and it's like if if they did not if they weren't there it's like could you imagine mm -hmm. the world we'd be living in and i'm so glad that you brought that up because um something that a friend of mine karen my amazing artist friend who maybe she'll be on here sometime mm -hmm. um 
I love something she said once about um, like if somebody had like it was somebody that had come out of prison and then they you know they needed to get a job and they were a bit like oh well you know that they were having to work it was some it was a menial job it was something like a janitor or something and I remember I love that she said the job doesn't give you dignity you bring dignity to the job so like whatever it is you're doing you can do it with dignity and it's like Martin Luther King said like that if you're a street sweeper then you be the best street mm -hmm. sweeper the world's ever known yes. and you do it in a way that is you're you're use, doing it as a service and I really feel like that's you know it's not that everybody has a lofty dream mm -hmm. but it's just that there are people who genuinely want to do something especially in the creative fields and they may not have the confidence they may no one may have ever told them honey you know what you should go for that dream if you want to sing there's a lot of people that have never had anybody say that to them yeah. and so they may have this gift that's buried in there and they're just like they know that it's just burning in them and they want to do it so bad and and it's not everybody I feel like that's a lot of what we want this show also to be about is mm -hmm. that to encourage people that you know no matter if anybody ever acknowledges it, like the fact that you have that and that's in you, that means it is meant to come out. Just like a seed planted in the ground is meant to grow out of that ground. Mm -hmm. And if it gets the right soil, with stuff we talked about in the first couple episodes, yeah. but if it gets the right soil, the right surroundings, the right amount of water, sunshine, everything, and yeah. it's nourished, mm -hmm. then it can, it can grow. Mm -hmm. But I, I really think there's a lot of people that whether it's in childhood or somewhere that maybe their dream was squashed yeah. or someone did some, I mean, I've heard horrible stories of things that, that were, you know, done to people's uh, dreams, their mm. creativity. And, uh, and it's, it's tragic because it's something that the world needs and that, you know, there's like a, there's a place for it, for yeah. each gift that everybody has, there's a place for it to be used and for people to know that, that they, you know, like you said, they not just that they matter, but also that, you know, that it's important mm -hmm. to the world that, that they do it. There's a purpose. Everyone has a purpose, and we all need to speak to each other's potential. Mm -hmm. um, there, <laughs> I met this guy at a party once, a total stranger. I'd never met him before, and uh, <laughs> I think I probably threw him off a bit because, again, as I told you, people that I just meet, I usually ask them, oh, what are you passionate about after the hello? Uh, the initial greetings and um he had to he had to excuse himself for like you know just to have a couple more drinks before he was felt comfortable about wow. going there with me because wow. i was just like wow that's a lot of information i don't even know you and that's just wow hmm. so then eventually he found me back <laughs> he found me oh. again at the party wow and um you know we were talking and he was like i'm ready to answer that question now i love that yeah and um i was like oh yeah i was really excited and oh. I did not expect to hear what he said. He actually said he wants to uh, develop fragrances. Mm. And I was like, what? That, you don't understand, you guys. That really touched my heart because there is nothing like a person who smells good. And he actually smelled amazing. On top of that, I'm like, I get it now. Let me tell you, could you imagine if there was no perfume in the world? Could you imagine if there was no kind of beautiful fragrance? I mean, we have flowers and things of that nature. But again, that is what's meant to inspire us. And this is that's another thing that's so I think is so exciting in terms of like when I when I think of God, because you know, I always think of God in terms of um, like what my relationship with Him is is one of like a co-creator because God never made a chair. You know, He He never made one chair. He never even made like a, a shirt. But he provided the wood from the trees that you can actually make that chair from. And, it's and just... the person having the ability to know, like, this is why architecture is one of the most amazing things to me. Because it's like, yeah. how do people, how, it's so incredible. Because that's something that's so above and beyond, like, yeah. what I would be able to do. Mm -hmm. And I look at that the way someone might look at you or me for doing the things we do. Yeah. But I just am like, how did you know how to design that and how to make it so that that building is standing there? And it's just so incredible. I am so fascinated by people, by individuals. I mean, definitely there are days where I just cannot take them. But outside <laughs> of that, like when I have these moments of just what I love to do, and I, I would give you this as a homework assignment for you guys to do, like um, take, a take a moment to 
not look at your phone, not scroll through all the apps. Yep. Go on to, you know, public transportation on your way to work and just watch people. Just look up and... and just look out the window. Just look out the window. You know, I, I, I like to... I used, I used to do these, like, little um, truth or dares to my, for myself mm-hmm. where it's kind of like, you know, I would wait to make eye contact with someone and I would hold it for three seconds. Talk about scared potential. Um, <laughs> let me tell you, that is frightening. Mm-hmm. For both parties involved. <laughs> Seriously, I mean, I would be shaking doing that kind of thing. But um, but overall, uh, the whole, I don't even know why I even brought that up. But essentially, all of us have potential. All of us have a purpose. And we are here to speak to each to each other's potential and to each other's mm-hmm. purpose and yep. and um, just build each other up, man. I mean, could you imagine? Could you imagine what the world would be like if every day you found one person every day to just speak life into. Yep. It, it just it just really, it just makes me so happy. It's kind of like that episode of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Slayer the musical. Do you remember that? You guys, you have to like try to, try to stream that if you can. That, that was that episode. I was like, I want a world where every day it's a musical. Could you imagine that? I know that's a lot of information. I love that. Seriously. There's some friends I have that may listen that they will love that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, yeah, I, totally. But I, I just think that um, that um, we we need to just kind of just be be more loving and be more gentle, be more kind. And because in some way or another, we're all scared. But at the end of the day... We're also all sacred in, mm-hmm. in some way, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, so it's kind of like you know, flip, flip the a little, a few of those letters around, and whichever one you land on, whether it's scared or sacred, you can always speak into both. Absolutely. And both of those are edifying in, yeah. in some way. Yeah, and the thing of you know, let's you know, like imagine situations where people are being bullied or something, mm-hmm. and there's like one person. And they're being taunted by a group of people or a couple people or someone bigger than them or whatever. And um, how that's affecting the brain, especially children, when this is happening, it's so heartbreaking because their brain is still in development. Um, and what that's doing and how that's informing who who they think they are. Mm-hmm. And whereas, you know, if they have loving, protective parents, then at least, not that there's ever an excuse for bullying, but then at least when they're home, their parents can like remind them who they are and, and help them to overcome that, right? But let's say somebody's being bullied uh, in public and then they're, they also don't have a, a good home life or something, then that becomes like this bigger identity of like yeah. who they are. Mm-hmm. But on the, on the other flip side of that is then imagine now if someone is they're being like this person is there and they're being surrounded with, um, you know, nothing but uh, affirmation and encouragement. And so I feel like in its, in its best forms, that's, well, community should be that anyway. But like if a family is healthy, if a, not that any family is perfect, but just that a family is supportive of one another if like even in a, in a church setting or in any kind of arts setting, like Mm -hmm. I feel like, um, when you're doing a play or you're making a film, uh, you create community. You cr- it's like you become like a family. Mm-hmm. And um, like I mentioned in the other episode, like for me, um, whether that's in like a, a church setting where people are genuinely supportive of each other or <laughs> London Screenwriters Festival mm-hmm. where, um, you know, talking about scared versus sacred potential, there's also kind of a building up to things. I think sometimes like if you're in, a, in an environment where you start out, let's say you're trying something that's scary. Well, you don't start with the big scary thing necessarily mm-hmm. first. Maybe mm-hmm. you start with something that's a little scary, and then you take it up a little notch, and you go a little scarier. Mm-hmm. So, like the London Screen Arts Festival, you do Talent Campus, and you know you start out maybe doing some kind of an eye gazing thing where you're looking at somebody, like, or you're doing something where you're. I don't want to give too much away, but like mm-hmm. just those things. And, okay, everybody knows, I think, by now, if they've been to London Screenwriters, that there's firewalking that happens, mm-hmm. right? But you don't start on the first day of Talent Campus with firewalking. Mm-hmm. You spend several days not just doing things that elevate the, the risk or the challenge, mm-hmm. but you spend that time getting uh, close with that group of people. And that's what starts encouraging you that, 
hey, we can do this because we can all do this and we're all there supporting each other. Yeah. And I feel like if we had that more in the world where everybody just knows I've got your back, mm -hmm. then people would have more of that boldness and more of that courage to do things because they would know, hey, um, you know, Joe over there, is, he's there and he's going to support and Paige is here, she's going to, you know, mm -hmm. and to just keep, you know, like that, that feeling that you get when you're in a group of people and everybody's like, you can do it, oh Johnny, my gosh. So, you know, the outsiders. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. Support, seriously, yeah. encouragement, especially like vocal encouragement is everything. Yeah. I, one of the things I really love doing is, you know, I go out like once a year nowadays. <laughs> I'm kidding, not really. Um, but I will go, you know, go dancing. I love to dance, you guys. It's like everything for me. One of the things I really enjoy doing when I go out dancing is going up to a complete stranger. And, you know, especially if, you know, you know, they're kind of getting their groove on, they're moving a little bit. And then I just come up alongside them. I'm like, get it, work, get it, get it, work, work. <laughs> You know what? It's like, and you can tell mm -hmm. that, you know, this is not necessarily any kind of terminology people are familiar with. <laughs> but they know what you but mean. But <laughs> let me tell you, when they start moving, when they hear that, get it, work, <laughs> work, and like, it's hilarious. I had um, a, a girl that um, I went alongside, I, I went next to at a, a club. It was years ago and um, dancing and everything. And I just like, get it, work. Girl, she almost knocked me down. She was really, <laughs> she, she was in it. And I was just like, and it's just so, because that was just that encouragement. I know. It, it's, it's just amazing. Could you imagine like in every move that you made, um, if you ever are indecisive about something and then someone's just oh, over your shoulder. Yeah, you, you got this. You got that. Get it now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And just to know that you have that support mm -hmm. is everything. Mm -hmm. And not only having that support, but could you imagine being that support for someone? There it is. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, it, it is, it's um, uh, vice versa. It's mm -hmm. like, a, it's, it should be reciprocated. It's like, um, mm -hmm. and it's almost, almost all the more rewarding to be the support. Absolutely. You know, so. Yeah. Yep. Because what you give away is always given back. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> but um this has been an amazing um episode amazing talk um we really enjoy getting to engage with you guys and want to continue engaging with you yeah and we definitely want uh you know feedback thoughts um questions stories even. stories absolutely is one of the big things that we really because we would love to talk about like you know if, if there's a something that's you could apply any of this to or that you're like yeah i talk about this all the time that kind of thing we want to hear that because that helps us to be encouraged as well mm -hmm. so we could also use encouragement is what we're talk about say. it <laughs> mm -hmm. um yeah so we thank you guys for listening in and um also if you have suggestions for um, future episodes or anything you want us to talk about, please tell us because, you know, we are always compiling more ideas and we're going to start having some really interesting, lovely guests on that we are zipped about right now. But probably by the time you hear this, you will know who they are yeah. or at least one or two of them. So excited. Yeah. So anyway, thank you for listening. Thank you for sticking with us and, uh, we hope that by next time that you will have taken some kind of a risk that you maybe wouldn't have taken mm -hmm. um, before you heard this. We're going to start giving know. you guys homework. Yeah, we're going to start putting risks out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> follow, us, follow us on Instagram, sacred underscore potential underscore podcast, and on our Facebook page. Mm -hmm. sacred potential mm -hmm. and we do have we are on youtube but we're, we're going to be basically putting the episodes on there uh, maybe with some surprises uh, mixed in love you guys take okay. care bye love you bye hey guys thanks so much for tuning in to another episode of sacred potential we hope you enjoyed it we are so grateful that you guys listened all the way to the end. A way of us showing our love for you. We would like you to let us know if you have any prayer requests. As we mentioned on one of the episodes, this is a big part of what we do is we pray about everything and we pray for people that we care about. If you don't even know what I'm talking about and you're like, what's a prayer request? Basically just send us a note, uh, an email, uh, a message, however you are in touch with us, a return message to our newsletter, and just let us know something that you're dealing with, something that is concerning you, whether for yourself or someone that you love and care about. 
and we will pray about it and we would be thrilled to be able to pray for you and your loved ones. And feel free to reach out because we look forward to hearing about the shift that's happened because your prayer has been answered. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.